Hello, everyone. I hope you all having a great day. Thank you for joining in. We're gonna start in a second. I share my screen. Okay, let's get started. Uh, once again, thank you for joining in uh, today webinar. As you might know, we're going to talk about the cleaning boom, how the industry is changing, how to position yourself to win. So with that said, let's get started. So for today's agenda, we're going to be talking about what's the new normal what's happening on social media and online, Google Trends and Yelp data. I think this data will be an eye opener for most of you. Finding your niche, focusing, it's very important that you don't get distracted in these times of uncertainty and you really focus on, on specific targets. The strategy that got us uh, 60 plus leads uh, in the past uh, say 30 days. Uh, what we're focusing right now and what are the strategies that we're doing that are working and resources finally for you and your clients. So a little bit about myself. I think uh, some of you can relate. This uh, picture was taken a month ago uh, in the middle of the lockdown, trying to work and entertain my two years old old daughter. My name is Samuel Klein. Uh, I'm the CEO of Cleaning in Motion and Motion Avenue. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Venezuela. I moved to Israel uh, like seven years, eight years ago. From there, I uh, had the opportunity to live there for a couple of years, moved to New York, and uh, now uh, I live in Miami. Cleaning in Motion, it's an agency that focuses on the cleaning industry. We only work with cleaning companies. Before Cleaning in Motion, we had, and we still do, an agency that had all type of clients. So it was very hard because uh, every time we had to learn a new industry and I have my ups and downs. So when I moved to Miami, I got a friend who owns a Jamper franchise. A, for those of you who don't know, it's a commercial cleaning company. And he uh, invited me to work from his office. Uh, we have a team of eight people and we work uh, remotely even before the pandemic. So for me, that wasn't a problem. And I went, I started working from his office, started learning his business. He asked me for help, I started helping. And two years later, uh, we're still working together. We have done amazing things. His business has grown. And thanks to him, he, uh, we're currently working with around eight to nine uh, cleaning companies. And we love the niche and we decided to specialize and only serve this specific niche. So we know a lot about the, the industry, as uh, I mentioned before, because I see it every day. I'm there. I know the challenges and I know how it's shifting. Plus, it, uh, of course, as, as a marketer and sales guy and it's my job also to research and understand what's working and what's not so saying that uh, to start i think uh, we have to start with the right mindset no and this not only in this industry i guess is in, in all industries right now the obstacle is the way we cannot turn around and look the other way when we face challenges because in this uh new reality we're going to face a lot of different challenges a lot of uncertainty there is a lot of clients that uh, pass us, pass our service that are not coming back there are clients that uh, are going to go out of business and there are new businesses that are going to thrive so besides that the ways that that uh, we've been doing things uh, has changed i know a lot of uh, locations that that uh, they just want to quote over the phone. They don't want uh, people to go into their establishment and, and measure so they can have the right square feet to, to send an educated proposal. 
So we have to adapt. We have uh, to, to face this new reality and we have to reinvent ourselves, no? So there is new times ahead and I think it's crucial that we all have a voice or business uh, and your clients need us more than ever. We basically need to tell our stories. We need to tell how we are facing these new challenges and what we're doing differently to adapt. So if we fail to adapt, we fail to move forward. And it's as simple as that. And you're gonna hear me talk about adaptation a lot in this webinar. So what's the new normal? And I think uh, a lot of us can relate, no? Uh, we are all turning into germophobics. I think uh, there hasn't been a more awkward awkward situation when uh, you are in a closed space or, or making the line in the supermarket and someone sneezes or someone coughs. It's just uh, all eyes on them and, and, and you feel that tension that's not going anywhere. That's uh, the same feeling in offices. And yeah, this is a new reality, you know? So, and just like that, COVID happened and we all became germophobic. So, but this is also the new reality. And some of you are starting to wear uh, the right equipment to go and clean offices. And when customers see pictures like this, they feel safe. And not only that, they share it also with their current customers, with their employees. And again, it makes them feel safe. It looks professional. So not all of you are, have all these suits and, and masks, but I think this is more than enough or, or in some situations. Of course, if you can have the, your, your suit, great. Otherwise, if you show them that you have gloves, that you have the mask, you have glasses, and, and you're taking care and you're adapting, and I think uh, your client will appreciate it. So. As new times comes, new opportunities await, you know? And as I mentioned before, I know that a lot of us have lost clients and we're still on pause and we don't know if some of them coming back or not. But besides that, uh, my recommendations would be focus on the ones that are worth it. The ones that are always have been there for you, the ones that pay on time, the ones that, uh, that they're not always complaining about everything. So let the painful clients go. I know that we all need the cash flow, but we also have limited time uh, to invest in a, it's not the best use of our time investing on, on trying to recover clients that they weren't a good fit at the beginning, you no? Know? Uh, time to show up, you're, you're more than just a service providers. It's time to add value. Uh, so as I mentioned before, we don't only want to, to go and clean. Uh, we want to communicate. We want to have a voice. Uh, we want to share what we're doing with them. We want to tag them on our, on our uh, social media posts. Make a real impact by helping local business stay safe during the pandemic. We're going to see later on that for the first time, this industry has become... Uh, one of the main characters in this uh, horror story, you know, and uh, you have the healthcare that uh, are fighting the hospitals and you also have uh, the cleaning industry or the cleaners that, that are going there to disinfect. And uh, again, we have a story to tell for the first time. We're making noise. We're in the news. Uh, this industry has come much more attractive than, than it it was before, before it was just a, a very good industry, very lucrative, but very low profile, no? Uh, so make that impact and, and let them know that you're the professionals that, that can handle any situation. You are in the front lines cleaning and disinfecting, uh, so business won't have to close the doors, so be proud. As I mentioned before, now business depend on you more than ever. Tell your story, have a voice, we talk about that. You have great stories because this is not normal that you go with a mask, with, with a gloss, with, with a suit, and you have to disinfect. So there is a lot to tell there and be proactive, no? Don't wait until the opportunities happen and go get them. So as I mentioned, the industry is in the news. And here are some blog posts and articles that I found, uh, some of them in major news sites in the past 
30 days, so, no, we have from May, April, and so on. So demand for cleaning service spiked during coronavirus outbreak. There is a corona cleaning boom is coming. Uh, how COVID-19 will change the way that you work forever, preparing the germs warfare, and being pros advice on keeping workplace safe from COVID-19. A little bit uh, more, there may not be enough well-trained workers to clean up uh, where coronavirus has been. I love this uh, article from NPR. And uh, yeah, the idea is that you share also this with, with uh, your database, no? And if you are informed and uh, you know things like this, the new coronavirus can live on a surface for two to three days. Here's how to clean them. And I think it's a, a very powerful piece of content that you can share again with your community, with your client and prospects. So as workplace begin to reopen across the country, the demand for commercial cleaning and disinfecting services increase and new career opportunities unfold. And we're gonna see this graphic, it's very interesting. So brace yourself, the cleaning is coming. A uh, very interesting dat data that I found is that a recent Facebook survey revealed that only 45% of small and medium-sized businesses say they would rehire the same people once they reopen, you know? So this is why you have to adapt and this is why you have to have a voice and this is why you have to communicate so you avoid surprises. If 40% of the uh, people or businesses are going to rehire the same services, that leaves a lot of like the rest of, of that percentage, 65%, 55%, that might be able to hire you that's going to change provider no uh, and the ones that it's going to stick with you is because again you were there for them and you have a clear communication that way you set expectations they know that you're open and uh, you shouldn't have any surprise so uh, as i mentioned the uh, cleaning boom is coming uh, i think uh, you can see it with with this data do companies plan to add regular disinfection to their cleaning program. 94% say yes. Once business reopened post COVID-19, how likely is that they will increase the cleaning frequency of their facility? You have almost 80% very likely and likely. So there is an a big opportunity now to upsell your current clients. If you used to clean an office uh, twice per week now, uh, you should add some, some kind of promotion or something so you can uh, add more days. So I don't have to be a genius to create this prediction after watching uh, uh, some of the blog posts and data that I show you. And later on, I'm going to back up more my prediction on quotes uh, on why I think that the cleaning industry is going to boom. Businesses will spend big dollars on cleaning their workplaces and disinfecting products. COVID-19 will turn us into germophobics, as we saw. The race to the bottom is over. Clients won't be focusing on the lower price anymore. They will look for the most professional, most informed, and well-equipped, talented teams. That's why, it's, again, so important to have a voice, to share your experience, to share pictures of your work, and so on. So commercial cleaning will never be the same after COVID-19 and uh, on a positive note, no? So now that uh, we know that uh, the industry uh, it's making noise, let's see what's happening online. So uh, in the past uh, almost uh, eight years, we can see how the consumption of social media has increased and Later in, in, in at the beginning of the pandemic, and this hasn't changed that much, uh, we are spending around 4.3.5 hours per day on social media. This is only on social media. Uh, also, COVID-19, people spending more time with devices. So if you see here, people are spending 45% more time on their laptops, 67, 60, uh, 66% more time on uh, mobile phone, playing games and so on. So we are living in a virtual world. And as uh, many offices uh, 
are going to keep working from home, this is not going to change drastically. So what else can we learn from the data online? There is a very cool tool that it's called Google Trends and that I'm going to share with you. And I recommend for you to play around with this tool at least uh, once a month, once every quarter. And what it does is tells you what's trending online, what's trending in the Google ecosystem. In the Google ecosystem, we have Google search where you go google.com and search whatever you want. You have YouTube, you have Google shopping that it's uh, like the Amazon of, of Google and so on. And so you're gonna see in a bit, but what uh, Google Trends tell you is what's trending in the past four hours, in the past month, in the past year. So you can choose your timeline. And if we can spot trends, uh, we can definitely act very fast. And I'm gonna give you an example of what we did uh, based on what we saw on Google Trends. And we got great results uh, at the beginning of March, no? at, at the beginning of the pandemic. So in the past month, searches for hand sanitizers, masks, and disinfecting have grown by 5,000% worldwide. People are searching like crazy these terms. There's no surprise, but let's see what else they're, they're searching, you know? So my advice in, in looking at the data I'm going to show you and looking before, don't let a good crisis go, go to waste, no? So this is Google Trends, and let me show you the real, the real, uh, deal no the real tool so we have here google trends trends at google.com we can uh, uh, search any topic uh, any search term i just uh, click here and uh, type it down so in this case we have house cleaning carpet cleaning cleaning service commercial cleaning and office cleaning we can see that carpet cleaning is the one that it's uh, uh, trending the most and what google does is give you a score from zero to 100 100 meaning that it's trending and zero is of course the opposite and it gives you a lot of very useful data that you can use for your own territory so here we can see at least where carpet cleaning is trending the most and we can choose which state and it will tell you what percentage of these keywords that i chose you can choose your own keywords it's trending uh, in what city. And then you have the breakdown of all the keywords. So you have house cleaning that you can see where it's trending the most. So the darker blue is where it's trending. For example, in Idaho, it's trending a lot. In Arizona, it's trending a lot. In Maine, it's trending a lot and so on. So overall house cleaning near me uh, has rise 60% in search so that means that people have in the past uh, this is in the past 30 days compared to the past 30 days uh, the searches for good house cleaning near me has gone up 60 percent now we have carpet cleaning so you have harp carpet cleaning in titusville fort st joan and so on so carpet cleaning when it says breakout it means that people are searching more than five thousand percent uh, they're searching 5,000% more than the previous month, no? than in this case, uh, April. So it's insane. 5,000% increase on searches is a lot. There is a huge opportunity for carpet cleaning in this area. And uh, if I know this, these uh, keywords that are rising 50%, 60%, and so on, I use them in my content strategy. I use them in my vocabulary when I'm selling. And of course, if you're doing Google AdWords, you use those terms in Google AdWords. Uh, cleaning service, again, oven cleaning service, interesting. Uh, commercial cleaning, commercial cleaning near me, and so on. So here we have a, just another exercise, it's the same, but I wanted to do also the same with, uh, with products that people are looking like crazy. And uh, this doesn't mean that it's the, the ones that are below, it doesn't mean that they're not trending. It's just compared to mass, uh, it, it's not, it's, uh, there is no comparison, no? Like mass is insane. So you have here all of the states that are looking for masks and you have here black leather glove, 
the glove helped with coronavirus. So all of the searches, again, more than 5,000%. So here the exercise is uh, if you sell these products, great. If not, it's also understanding what's what's happening in our industry. You know, this part somehow of our, or now of our industry and, and understanding what people are searching for, it's very interesting, you know. COVID-19 cleaning. This is something that, that I have seen a lot. So people are searching like that. Companies that clean COVID-19, that's another term that we saw uh, surging more than 5,000%. So COVID cleaning services, more than 5,000%. So you get the point. Uh, we are trending. The industry, there are search terms that, that there is a big opportunity that we can tackle. And my advice is to play around with this and put it in your SEO keyword proposal strategy, you know? So, sorry, let's uh, go back here. So uh, we already saw Google Trend. We saw what's happening on social media, what's happening uh, in the news. Now, Yelp give us this data. No? What are the categ categories that are, are rising? Uh, hospital, legs, uh, legs, sorry, art galleries. Interesting. I would never expect art galleries. Uh, country clubs, guns, and so on. So now we have the categories that are falling. So days pass, uh, breakfast and brunch, tours, and so on. So the point here is try to focus on industries that are worth your time, that you know that they are rising, that you know that they're going to be around in the next uh, three to six years uh, or months, sorry. You know they're going to be around long term, no? Uh, and don't focus on things that you don't know if the, they're gonna survive. No, I, I would be very cautious with the days pass. And I know that uh, a lot of you always have at least one or two of, uh, of these ones, of these days pass. So like that, be very aware of what you're cleaning right now and uh, be aware also how likely is that they're gonna stay in business in the next month as we're approaching a recession i'm not a, an economist i love to read but that's my guess uh, with uh, almost 40 million people unemployed uh, things are still uh, very tough no so there is another reality also uh, if you can spot uh, what percentage of your clients are in the unknown territory but also what percentage are offices and now offices, there is this, this uh, big boom that uh, the tech companies are promoting. This is the CEO of Twitter. Uh, here are the companies leading the work from home revolution. So we have Microsoft, we have Twitter, we have Facebook. All of these companies allow their employees to work from home uh, until the end of the year. And they're saying that probably it's gonna be uh, until they, Basically, it's going to be free will. No? If, if they want to work from the office, great. If not, everybody can work from home. So after coronavirus, the office uh, of the future is the office of the past. So my point here is that uh, the office space has also become an unknown territory. There is a lot of companies that are going to prefer to work from home. Uh, and that's going to leave a, a big hole there. You know? and. Uh, that was the, like the the always the the easy client. I don't know if easy is the right word, but but it was the most common client. Okay, I will go and tackle all different office buildings and and uh, office malls and things like that. And 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 you will uh, all of you at least have a a certain percentage of clients that is this. No, but now that we might put this. Uh, category of offices in the unknown bucket, eh, we have to be better prepared. So we saw that there is a lot of categories uh, falling. We saw that we're aware that the future, it's very unknown. And on the other hand, we know that there is a lot of uh, 
also positive things happening in the industry, we're trending, we're in the news and so on. So how can I leverage this information? What can I do with this information? So again, the key to success is often the ability to adapt. So if you've been doing things certain way before COVID, now it's time to change and adapt. And part of the adaptation is understanding what market you're gonna target and where to choose and, and where to focus your efforts, no? So this is one of the main things that I want you to take from this webinar and it's choose your niche very carefully. Choose one, choose two, depending on your sales force, sales team, if you're a one man show or, or woman, a one woman show, depends again on your capabilities. You can choose more than one niche, but always ask, do you think that this will be around in the next six months, one year? Of course, nobody knows what's gonna happen in five years, but at least in the next six to one year, no? Six months to one year. So we put all of these uh, uh, industries together. And we think these industries are not going anywhere. Uh, we did the exercise with Google Trends and, and all other tools that we use to see the, like, the trends in, in all of these uh, keywords or industries and understand also how much people are searching for uh, these services. And uh, overall, these are services that we are always going to need, no? So my advice to you is try to choose one, two, three, again, depending on your capabilities and go all in and uh, focus on that. If uh, I put myself as an example, before I used to have a marketing agency that we had uh, got any type of clients. And when I hired my se first uh, sales guy, it was a completely failure because I just told him, look, I, I need uh, I need accounts, no? bring me accounts, people that uh, businesses that need of a uh, marketing. So the guy, yeah, but so everybody, yeah, everybody, just just bring me something. Okay, now bring me businesses that are making more than one million a year. But still, the pool is huge. So, uh, learning, 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 and long story short, after after we decide to to focus on on the cleaning industry, now it's it's easier. I know where to look for my clients. I know where they hang out online. I know their communities. I know the associations and so on. And same you can do here. If you choose one funeral home, one do doctor's office and you focus on these two, it's easier to find databases it's, and, and it's easier for your uh, team to focus on getting uh, clients in this in this industry. So this is uh, a tool that we use, uh, very affordable. It's around like, I don't know, $50. We're not related to them. They're not promoting or nothing like that. It's just that we use it because uh, the the data is very accurate and uh, if you know again uh, what are the industries that you want to focus that you think you're go they're going to survive uh, you can search here so for example we put funeral homes in miami uh, and we see that uh, they give us all of the funeral homes in miami phone numbers email website linkedin facebook instagram and so on and that's it. That's the only thing that I need to get started. So now I just have to start doing marketing, call calling, sending emails, uh, putting in campaigns and so on. So if you know where to aim, it's more likely that you're going to hit the target. So as the company, as the industry start rising and, and, and there is a lot of opportunities as well as challenges, uh, competitors are, are also rising no we're not the only one adapting there are different industries that were hit hard because uh, like contractors for example that the, they have to work from uh, people's home and not everybody's allowing people going to their homes right now and we have seen that uh, there is a lot of competition out there a new competition out there so uh, this is me, well, I'm in Miami and I have taken screenshot every time that I get the target by uh, Instagram or Facebook ad uh, regarding disinfection uh, service, disinfecting service or, or cleaning service. 
And it's insane, again, the amount of people that are promoting their business. And if you can see, there is also a pattern, you know, like people are promoting themselves like experts. And some of them might be experts, but I guarantee you some of them is just trying to get into an industry that is trending right now. Uh, because I, I can see the names and I can see that a lot of them don't even have a website or, or, or a history, at least online. Uh, and uh, we have seen a lot of contractors also uh, jumping into this, uh, into the cleaning industry. So that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It means that, again, people are going where the money is. Uh, but what uh, was something very exclusive and uh, before that, that people gather uh, program machines and, uh, and disinfectant services, now everybody's trying to offer it. No? And if you are a cleaning company and you're not offering that, knowing that there is a lot of new competitors trying to take advantage of this trend, you definitely have to be prepared and empower you and your team with, uh, with new services, new tools no? to fight the, the virus. Uh, so for example, here is a, a perfect example. These guys are offering disinfecting services, but if you see their profile, uh, they specialize in the construction, building, and so on. They, they just have to adapt, and that's what they're doing. Now, these are the, the small local players. Now, if we see what we're, uh, the big players are doing in national companies like Janikin, uh, we also try to see here what is their message. So get your business back to business. Janikin provides a higher level of disinfection to your facility see how Janikin can help. So of course, Janikin, Coverall, and uh, the big players are, are doing a lot of different things online. They invest uh, $50,000 a month uh, on average in, in all of the channels. And what I'm showing you right now, it's sponsor. It's paid advertising on Facebook and Instagram, as you can see. Facebook is very transparent. So Facebook allows you to see all of the ads that your competitors or any company is putting out there. So that's what I did and we took screenshot. And we do this often because we can learn a lot from that. Actually, our next webinar, it's uh, how to spy on your competitors and, and uh, understanding what uh, the industry is doing online. That we're gonna talk a lot about that in a, in a moment, no? Another very interesting thing is the sticker, you know, clean and disinfect. And this facility has been disinfected by Janky. We're doing also something similar that we'll talk in later on. And of course, uh, like uh, all of the previous competitors, you have to show your disinfecting services. This is Coverall. Coverall has ads for each industry. They have a specific ad targeting gyms, schools, uh, retail, and so on. A lot of ads. And for example, this guy has been running this specific ad since last year. So this tells me two things or it's working or someone is spending money like crazy and they don't care so my guess is that it's probably working and they're getting uh, some positive uh, return on investment no so we go back to adapt and now uh, we take it from uh, the master bruce lee adapt what is useful reject what is useless and add what is specifically your own I think I love that quote. Now, moving forward, I want to focus on the things that we're currently doing that are working. So my first uh, advice to you guys is focus on retention. Uh, if you don't have the cash flow coming in, you're not going to survive. As we saw before, 45% of uh, uh, clients are, are changing basically their providers and they're not gonna stick to the same one based on the survey that Facebook did. So communication is key. Communication is the key for retention. The communication is the key for upselling, for letting know that you're there, that, that your business is open. So this is your number one priority. At least send a one newsletter per week. Keep clients updated, set expectations, let them know that you and your team are prepared to handle the crisis. Let them know how you're handling the crisis and, and what you're doing to 
make the workplace safe, uh, virus free. And uh, if you let them know that you are have X product like the, the power or, or the electrostatic machine uh, and you offer, you have a big opportunity to upsell. Oops. So number two, market your business harder than ever. It's crucial that you put yourself out there. If there is a lesson that you can learn from, from this experience of uh, the lockdown and, and almost two months without uh, many, many of you or, or many businesses without doing anything, is that it's crucial to have a pipeline full of prospects and that you never should stop marketing and selling because now you go back to this business and, and, and what? Uh, you start struggling because you don't know, you, you don't have a, a, a warm or hot pipeline. So uh, we know that there is record social media consumption. You have to put yourself out there. And it's uh, okay if, if you were in a heavy lockdown and you weren't allowed to work, that you were promoting your business on social media and you were getting uh, leads or you were at least going after the leads pre-COVID and warming them up and they see you on social media and they see you that you have a voice and you're posting daily, posting your experience, they will keep you in mind and, and when they open their business or when they need the services, you will be the first one to call. No. Now, second, that this is where we're going to focus uh, the rest of the presentation for the first time in a long time, Facebook and Instagram are bringing B2B leads at an amazing price. We used to spend a lot of money on Facebook advertising last year for commercial cleaning space. For housing, it always has worked very well, but uh, to getting B2B leads, uh, it has always been a challenge. This is not the case right now. We have seen amazing results at a great price, great quality of leads promoting uh, commercial cleaning services in Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so this is something to take into consideration. Google AdWords has less competitors right now and it has more searches as we saw in Google Trends for our business. So it makes it a very good opportunity to jump into this platform. Uh, Google My Business is a must. If you're not familiar what's Google My Business, I will show you in a second, but it's something that is relatively easy for you to handle at least the basics. Of course, it has a lot of different hacks and so on. So this is one of our clients. This is where I work from, from inside this office. And this, what you're seeing here to the right, it's what's Google My Business. Also, Google My Business, what allows you to be on Google Maps when people search for your address and you they can search by your name, you need a Google My Business account. So to create a Google My Business account is very easy. You just have to Google it. And you will have a, a lot of different videos about it. Uh, we have also a webinar about Google My Business in our YouTube channel, Cleaning in Motion, so you can learn more. But the idea of Google My Business is, like any marketing effort is to bring leads, to bring clients. So if we go to the back end of Google My Business and you log in, this is what you're gonna see. So we have uh, this month uh, in the past 28 days, 2,700 views, 8, 1,800 searches and uh, a lot of activity, you know? So we see the reviews, we see the pictures, and we can have the insights. And this is where things get interesting because it tells you a lot of information that you can also use and leverage. Uh, and you can optimize your Google My Business listing so you get more uh, business, no? Where to find this infected wipe is, uh, this is a 14 user has found us searching this term. That for us is great because uh, this company is selling uh, disinfecting wipe a uh, floor cleaning service near me great uh, old pro carpet so we start doing a lot of things uh, with the carpet knowing the the google trends and we want to be found as also as carpet cleaning so you can see here how people are finding us what search term they're using uh, 
how many have seen us in maps, in a search, how many visits to the website we got, how many request directions, and how many calls, no? So again, there is a lot of information here. It's crucial that uh, you are in doing or you have a Google My Business listing. Call email marketing, it works. We have done it, we're doing it. We have done it for the past year at least. And we get at least one proposal per week and sometimes more, sometimes, yeah. I would say on average it's at least four to five proposals a month from cold emailing. And in cold emailing, you have to have a database. So we go back to the niche, to the industry. If you have an industry, you have the database, you can start targeting different ways. Mail only work if you have a, a, a niche or industry, otherwise if you send mail to thousands of businesses and hope for the best, it works, don't get me wrong, but it's, it works much better if, if you're focused and you make and design that mail to talk about, you know, talking to, to that industry specifically. Uh, if you can purchase a press release, I think it's super powerful to have that uh, logo in your website, in, in your marketing material as seen on a uh, press release. doesn't have to be expensive if it's a local newspaper. If you reach out, probably they do it for free because again, we're the main characters of the story right now. You can add a lot of value to the overall community by giving tips on how to clean and so on. So PR uh, give you that rank or authority that people perceive when they see you on, on TV, on, on a big publisher website. Uh, SEO also, depending on the keywords and depending on the city. Uh, SEO oh, now, it, it's easier, easier, nothing is easy, but uh, it's, uh, you have better opportunities, let's say it like that, than before, because again, a lot of people, they just stop their marketing efforts. Uh, and there are new keywords, you know, like disinfecting, COVID and things like that, that, that can be interesting for, for the industry and we wanna, be on, on the first page when people look for those terms, no? Uh, SEO, it's more of a mid long-term strategy. Focus on businesses that are more likely to survive the pandemic or remain open in the next uh, month. And don't stop selling ever. An empty pipeline may eventually put you out of business. And I, I think uh, this is a very uh, hard lesson to learn and we wanna hopefully avoid it. We already got sugar up, so let's not stop selling. Now, I wanna show you how we got the, the leads. These are screenshots from my Facebook account. I'm gonna show you here, this is my Facebook account. We can see here that it's in the last 30 days. And we can see here the campaigns. No, the generation sales, sales, this for franchise and so on. So we have 91 leads. Uh, at a cost of twenty dollars. This okay. Let's put in April now. We have thirty-eight leads at a price of thirty-six dollars. Only spending a one thousand three hundred. Let's see. So far in the month of May. And it's not, we have, a, I'm gonna show you the ads, no, but the ads basically, they have two call to actions. They have the, the fill out the form and they have the call now. So here we have the leads at $84. We have, we have leads on, on $24. On Google AdWords, we have seen leads from $200. They're a little bit more qualified most of the time, uh, but it's a numbers game, no? And, uh, I want to show you the ad, some of the ads that we're running, but I think I have it here. Okay. So from April to May, this is in the last almost two months, we have 125 uh, leads. On average, the lead in the, has been $27, which is not that bad. Yep. Uh, yeah, average 25.34. Okay. Now, the uh, besides uh, this account, this is another client. 
another jumper office that we work and we have uh, 43 leads on residential because they do also residentials uh, sometimes 99 leads uh, on the past almost two months nine leads average cost you can see here it's around also the 25 dollars and uh before showing you a little bit more of the uh, of the results this is the ads that we're running no it's just as easy as as showing a video of the owner talking the owner is not very outgoing so uh, we had to do that record different shots and, and we put it together but we record this with a simple phone with a tripod and with a mic that you can buy on amazon that overall it's a 30 dollars investment so something super simple that really looks uh, authentic that you're speaking from the heart and, and you're sharing your knowledge will do the trick no people spend sometimes uh, thousands of dollars in lighting or uh, a big production you don't need all of that you just need a good piece of information you need to add value and you need to say to what what are you capable of and what services are you offering no so we back up that with uh, this text inside the video and uh this video lasts uh, like one minute and at the end of the video we have the call to action it's call now and we provide a phone number and with that phone number we also track it so what you're seeing here is the information from those phone calls so uh, in the past 30 days for this account we have 166 uh, calls this additional to the facebook leads or the, if you put it, it's more than 100 commercial cleaning leads and you can see here how many came from the ad uh, adwords uh, campaign how many came from the Facebook video? In this case, wasn't that much. How many came from the Google My Business? How many came from the landing page? That is also the Facebook video because the Facebook takes you to a landing page. And how many came from newsletter and call emails that we're doing? So there is a lot of movement here, no? And uh, definitely definitely it's worth to try facebook ad eh, today so here we are this is the facebook this google my business that we already saw so how did we get these uh, results no eh, first uh, to to understand how we got here you need to understand what is a funnel i love this definition it's a very simple definition a marketing funnel is a way of breaking down the customer journey all the way from awareness stage when they first learn about your business to the purchase stage when they're ready to buy your product or service. So again, what we try to see online, what we try to understand is how people are gonna find us, how people are gonna be aware that we exist. And since the moment that, okay, they're, aware of our existence how we're going to turn them into customers so they have to go through different stages and we try to map it up no and this is what we call a funnel you probably have heard that word but uh, we try to map up where are the steps that someone has to take online since the moment that they realize that we exist until again they, they become a customer so this is a very simple funnel that we usually run and this is how we start with most of our clients google adwords facebook ads and direct mail we send it to a landing page where we have all the information that landing page has a clear call to action call now for a free estimate they click here and they fill out the form or they call directly once they fill out the form it triggers an email sequence because it, eh, if you have experience in advertising you know that sometimes can be difficult for to get the lead in the phone eh, and uh, sometimes you need to follow up a lot of times to get them to pick up the phone and, and finally you know get that appointment so after they fill out the form they go to a thank you page where we set the expectations someone will be contact you shortly and so on and then they will get a text re message reminder when you set the appointment so for people who 
didn't fill out the form, but they interact with one of our ads and they went to a landing page. We retarget them or remarket them and we start showing them uh, different ads along the, the web. No, So if you have experience buying anything online, you know that if you're going to buy a shoes and then you decided to hold on for a second and, and, and you start going to, I don't know, CNN.com and other uh, websites, you will see that that shoe is pursuing you everywhere. So that's basically retargeting. Finally, a funnel can be as simple, as complex as you want. In this case, we are combining text message, voice message. Voice message is very powerful because so once fill out the form, I can uh, trigger automatically with a system that we use a voice message that will say, hey, hey Sam, I tried to call you because I saw that you fill out the information, request uh, the form, sorry, requesting more information about our cleaning services, please call us back. So that way they call you and you have to call them. It's uh, again, a very powerful way to, to get people uh, on the phone without pursuing them. Uh, and we have again a follow-up sequence after you send the proposal after you have that first meeting no and this is a two-step uh, sales cycle as we know so first you contact the lead and they tell you about the business sometimes you have to visit or most of the time you have to visit measure the, the establishment put the proposal together and send it and then what if you're not actively following up uh, it's hard to get that uh, to close that lead no so this is how the funnel looks in real life we have the ads we have the google adwords we have the facebook ads we always encourage uh, videos send people to a landing page trigger an email sequence and the thank you page and of course this part of the funnel is not all the funnel we have the the ads we already we started playing with these uh, ads also that uh, uh or, or amazing designing team did. And the cool ad about that, the cool thing about these ads is that it makes you stop scrolling. And uh, the whole point of this world, of the online world, is to disrupt people's ad attention or routine. No? You are, we become all robots when we're in Facebook, Instagram, consuming content and scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So we have to make them pay attention and stop. And, uh, we only have three to five seconds to get people's attention online. So we try to do it with things like that. This, that is like this 3D effect. Uh, and so far has worked very well. But surprisingly, what has worked the best and what's bringing leads at a very good uh, cost is having a PDF that people download. And it's free 38 point checklist for reopening your business. So we give advice on things that people uh, have to do when they're gonna go back and reopen their business. And uh, this is not a hard sell compared to the other ones that it's called me if you need this service. This is more to identify decision makers, to grow a database of businesses, but at the same time to create awareness because uh, we call those people uh, and we have the phone number here, but we call these prospects uh, when they fill out the form and download the PDF and, and tell them, hey, I saw that you download our PDF. Let us know if uh, you have any questions, if we can uh, be uh, uh, at any value to you and so on. And you start a conversation. Most of the time that conversation leads to asking for prices of the service. So if you have uh, this machine or something similar, uh, people are getting very familiar. This is also uh, surprisingly or not, uh, it's trending a lot. Everything that it's a uh, disinfecting machine, a uh, fire, electrostatic machine, things like that. So people have become aware of uh, what is this and how to use it. And finally, what I wanted you to do is at least choose one or two different circles from here and uh, start there. So you have to start somewhere if you're not doing any marketing. So if you want to go and focus on an industry, start doing cold email, social media. You know, again, there is a lot of different uh, affordable tools that you can create beautiful uh, posts. We recommend the one that is called Canvas, uh, SEO, 
start creating content, position yourself as an as a industry leader, as an authority. Uh, goal, goal. We all hate it, but we know that it works very well. Uh, we're going to talk about this in a second. Google My Business, Mail, Facebook Ad, Google AdWords. If the idea is that you start somewhere and you start adding circles as you go along. And of course, you have to measure and understand your, your numbers to see what's working and what's not. So that leads me to the next slide. That's know your numbers. This is one of our clients also in the space where we got him uh, this amount of leads, the, the amount of clicks, the month. So we got them 139, 292 leads in one month, this residential as well as commercial. Uh, and from leads to meetings or, uh, or proposal sense, this is the amount. And from proposals to new customers, this is the numbers, no? So they are spending on average uh, $1,500 per month, a little bit less. Uh, I would say even uh, $1,200 per month. This is the cost per lead, the cost per meeting, and the cost per customer. So yeah, it's very hard to keep a steady line and you know, going up. So you're gonna drop the ball here and there. In this case, they drop the ball and they pay 1500 to acquire a client, which if you ask me, is still very profitable if it's a decent account, because the way that you have to see it, is that if I tell you how much you would pay me right now to acquire, I, I have here one client in my pocket. How much would you pay me to, to get that client? Uh, and some of you would say $10, $20, which I think it's insane. But if I sold you that client for $500, $700, I would definitely take it. Uh, and we're talking about, yeah, if that client at least cleans three times per week and so on. But most of you do a yearly contract and the way to see it is that you have to know what's the lifetime value of your clients. On average, every time that you close a client, you know that you're gonna get a yearly contract and they last at least hopefully one year with you, if not more. So in one year, they're gonna bring $12,000, $20,000. So if you're gonna, I'm gonna sell you a, a, a client for $1,000 and they're gonna bring $20,000 or 12, I think it's a no brainer. So know your numbers, know how much are you willing to spend to acquire a new customer and make sure that you're profitable and you have the only way to, to, to make sure and see it, you have to see the lifetime value of that customer, no? So Facebook definitely works. Google AdWords has always worked, but uh, it can get very expensive depending on your location. This uh, list of uh, things that that we usually measure, that we encourage you to do so. We will send you this later on on the presentation. Uh, and finally, before we finalize, I wanna uh, talk a little bit about this because this is a question that I keep getting asked uh, again and again, and it's how to get big, ac big accounts, no? clients that can pay 10, 20, $30,000 per month. And uh, this is at least one of the ways that we have found. Advertising can work, but it's a hit or miss. No, you're gonna get accounts, but it's it's hard to get that uh, twenty thousand dollars account just by doing Facebook ads or Google ads. The same strategy I'm gonna share. It's the same thing that we do here in the agency to acquire clients uh, that are in. Uh, or, or, or dream, uh, we call it our dream 100, no? 100 companies that we really would love to, to get help and, and to work with. So first of all, is focusing on the right accounts. We go back to the niche and you have to choose accounts that you know that are gonna make the difference from your business. Then you have to understand those accounts and we're talking here about choosing five accounts, five, dream clients. We're not talking about choosing a hundred, etc. If you close one of those five clients, you know that your business is going to change and it's, you're going to be very well positioned. So go and do the exercise. If you want to go after the big account, choose three to five accounts, understand who are the decision makers, 
uh, stock them online, gather all the information that you have, and then create a personalized experience for them. So the way that we do it is that we put our, our clients in three buckets. We have the dream account, which again, is the dream that we know that a sell cycle can take even six months or more. It's more corporate, more decision makers. Uh, it's, it's a long process, no? So the big fish, the big names, uh, strategic partnerships and so on. These are a relationship that we have to develop. This is highly personalized. Uh, so for example, if I know that uh, I wanna clean the offices of Pepsi here in Miami, that they have a huge building, I need to understand who is the decision maker and then I'm gonna create some experience super personalized to that uh, decision maker. So I will create personalized video, handwritten notes, uh, inviting to lunch and, and send them a, a package, something to disrupt them from, from their routine, something to, to make well, like uh, nobody has done this for, for, for me before. And that effect, will give you at least a chance to get them on the phone. And we're not talking about spending thousands of dollars. If you send just a simple package uh, with, with something different, uh, and I will show you what we're sending, it does usually the trick. Then you have the tier two, that is your wish list, that again, still very good accounts, that they require at least uh, uh, three plus times, uh, three plus days uh, cleaning per, per week and the safety net uh, that it's everything else in an industry or in a couple of industries so this is how we do it in a timeline that makes sense so we send a if we identify the, the decision maker we send a, a linkedin request a facebook message an email we follow them on twitter we try to interact with them on twitter uh, we send them a package then we call them to follow up uh, we send them mail, we invite them to launch. So this is, it requires a lot of uh, energy and, and uh, time investment and in, uh, you have to work marketing and sales very close to make this happen, but it works if you're patient and if you have the long-term vision and uh, if you really wanna get after that account, believe me, if you do it the right way, you will close them. And uh, what happened with these big accounts is that sometimes they already have their yearly contract and so on. But we know that nobody lasts forever and sooner or later, one of the competitors is gonna drop the ball and you wanna be there as a first priority. So this is uh, just an example of the things that we send. Uh, something different, no? it's not the typical pencil or pen ref or things like that. It's just a beautiful candle matches uh, very well the design like this is like a cologne and uh, we send also like funny stuff like a good karma spray this spray smells amazing and uh, most some of you might receive this from us also uh, again beautiful candy this uh a, it's called pupuri if you haven't seen this product in online it's a very cool product a vacuum cleaner for your desk and so on so it's a useful thing that will keep uh, the prospect uh, you know, on top of, uh, you, will, you will be on top of their, their mind, no? So it's time to be proactive, it's time to adapt, uh, it's time to be focused, uh, it's time to be the partner your clients deserve. Now, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, we cannot only provide service, uh, cleaning service, we have to provide disinfecting service, we have to provide uh, uh, things like this, like we are doing now, COVID-19 prevention kit, where we do a kit together of masks, gloves, uh, and sanitizers and so on. So if you are a prospect and, and you have two proposals of one company that only do cleaning and the other one who does cleaning disinfection, plus they can empower you with this, that every office, every business is going to need no matter what industry believe me i will go with the second option because uh, that way i don't have to look for a provider of hand sanitizer a provider of masks we know that these days are can be a pain to find these uh, these products no uh, so it gives us a, a competitive advantage sorry 
the other thing that we're doing is the sticker. We're putting sticker. This facility has been totally spray disinfected for your safety uh, for your safety with the virus, blah, blah, blah. Janpro, so it's very powerful. At the beginning, we saw a lot of resistance from the clients because they don't want a sticker in their door. But at the other hand, when we start sharing social media and sharing stories from uh, other clients that allow us, uh, people have come more receptive to doing this because if I'm a customer and I'm going to any establishment, any office, hair salon, doctor, and I see this, I feel more safe. Uh, so it's very important to do things like this, that uh, it's a very, very small investment. And also another thing that we're doing that is working amazingly, it's recording every time that we clean or disinfect, uh, we encourage uh, the crew to, to take pictures and, and video and we send it to the client. And that way the client, we tag them online and they are sharing all of our content because they want their customers and their followers to know that they're taking the, uh, their 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 business very serious and and they want to make everybody in their community feel safe so this is a must it doesn't require much effort just if you're doing any kind of social media posting uh, take pictures of you providing the service grab uh, the client's uh, name and tag them online uh, and share the pictures on an email and they will appreciate it and they will also post it on social media and they will uh, make it will make them feel feel it will make their clientele feel safer no finally it's time to lead don't panic i know that we can be overwhelming with the whole situation business opening canceling trying to to get the payment and so on focus on what's important stay close to your relationships uh, focus on retention, never stop selling, send weekly communications, record videos, as I mentioned, reinvent the way that you sell. Uh, there is a big opportunity in adversity. Every crisis brings the new opportunities and challenges. We saw it in data. Focus on retention, don't stop marketing, get uncomfortable. I think this is one and one the most important one of this list start doing things you haven't done before i know that all of you know that yeah i have to start my marketing yeah i have to start this and you have it in your do list since i don't know uh, five years ago it's time to do it it's time to put yourself out there and to have a voice and have someone challenge you your decisions we're living in very stressful times for some of us and uh it's important to have someone who can think clearly without any uh, emotional uh, overload so you can make smart decisions. And finally, going back to Master Bruce Lee, knowing it's not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. So hopefully you will only not only take some learnings and value from this webinar, but you will also take action. So with that said, we come to the end. I want to leave you with some resources. Uh, I would love if you guys can join our private Facebook group. It's called Cleaning in Motion, Janitorial Marketing and Sales Strategies. We are sharing on a weekly basis videos, information, uh, what's working, what's not. So uh, definitely I think you're going to get a lot of value. We are also sharing with you 84 ads five for commercial cleaning business. This is the screenshots that you saw before of uh, what other businesses are promoting. We're doing here uh, the same. We, we gather a PDF with 84 ads from companies that probably you know very well uh, for the commercial from the uh, housing also clean, from the home cleaning uh, industry. Finally, some resources to prove your business, uh, some uh, cool uh, grants that maybe uh, you didn't know, like uh, Yelp is giving 25 million, Facebook has given, I think, 300 million in advertising budget, and it's very easy to apply, so uh, there is a lot of cool resources here. And 
this is just another cool tool from uh, Google to learn about your market and, and what's happening, where there are opportunities. So you just have to click here when we send it to you and you will learn more. And here you have a lot of different uh, uh, links that uh, we recommend for you to explore and where we get our data. And finally, uh, if you have any doubts, if you want to explore more any of the strategies that we talked today, uh, I invite you to schedule a 30 minutes uh, free consultation. We can revise anything that you like uh, in your business. I can uh, tell you more about what we're doing that it's working. I would love to help. And if you need, of course, any marketing, uh, in service and we're happy to help so i hope that you have enjoyed this webinar and i hope to hear back from you soon so hit me up in the private facebook group send me an email and if not i also hope to see you in the next webinar thank you very much everyone and i hope you have a great day